You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. In July 1969, the Apollo mission brought Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins to the moon. Well, I guess technically it brought Michael Collins almost to the moon. But Neil Armstrong was mission commander, and he had the privilege of being the first man to walk on the moon. As he stepped out onto the moon's surface, he famously said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That same year in 1969, a German archaeology team led by W.E. Wendt was excavating a cave site in the mountains of Namibia, and they discovered rock art indicating just how long a journey mankind has taken. I feel like who art ed? I'm trying to spice it. Mr. Wood, art and me. Either way, it's it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and for this week's Fun Fact Friday, we're going to be talking about the Apollo 11 Stones. The Apollo 11 Stones were named after the famous NASA mission, although they were completely unrelated. W.E. Wendt was an archaeologist. He and his team were excavating a cave in Namibia. When Wendt heard news of the successful moon landing over his shortwave radio, he decided to name the cave Apollo 11, because it seems only fitting that a German man should get to name a cave in Namibia after an American space flight. Anyways, the cave site had been a long-standing shelter used by ancient humans. It's hard to say exactly how far back it goes. One of the problems with prehistoric people is that they didn't leave us calendars and records marking the dates when they created their work. They also didn't leave us artist statements explaining the purpose or the ideas behind those pieces. Fossil records indicate that Homo sapiens came on the scene somewhere around 100,000 years ago. A carbon dating indicates that the Apollo 11 stones were buried somewhere around 25,000 BCE. When they were discovered, they were the oldest known pieces of African art and among the oldest bits of evidence of human artistic expression. The stone fragments were from a stone slab roughly the size of a human hand. On the stone, there's a creature often described as a therianthrope, a mythical creature that's part human and part animal. The drawing appears to have the body of a cat, legs of a human, and on the head, there are sort of trace elements of some slightly curved horns reminiscent of an oryx, a large antelope. This work suggests that in the Middle Stone Age, there may have been mythology or even some complex religious belief systems. The reason this is considered to be so significant is that it indicates the hunter-gatherers in Africa during the Middle Stone Age were not only physically similar to modern humans, but also behaviorally modern. They used art for creative expression with rituals and customs. Symbolic thought is really the capacity that makes humans able to communicate, It's why I consider art to be the greatest development, as it makes all communication and advancement possible. The Apollo 11 stones demonstrate that early humans possessed that capacity long before what was previously believed. So in that summer of 1969, Apollo 11 was not only taking people farther than they had ever gone before, But Apollo 11 was also taking us farther back than we'd ever gone before, showing us just how far we've come and where it all got started. In a remote cave down in Africa. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted? If you found this tolerable, please like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week in the show notes on Twitter at WoodArtEd and on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.